Welcome back to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I've got an incredible guest, Corey Boutwell, and he gives driven men the tools to achieve personal success and fulfillment. He's a podcast host himself. He runs a course called Overcoming Chaos, helping men uh, fulfill their success, just like we just mentioned, and a lot of value to come from this gentleman. I love watching his content online. I'm very excited to connect with him today and go deep on whatever pops up. Corey, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, man. Super excited to be here. Brother, I'm looking forward to hearing where this goes, man. It's, uh, and I appreciate you reaching out and, uh, and connecting with me. I, love, I just love connecting with amazing people who are trying to do good things or who are not even trying, who are doing good things, who are into working on themselves, into meditation, like I like watching your stories on, into working on themselves, being vulnerable, being open, being transparent. It's really, really up my alley, man. So I really, really connect with your content and I really resonate with it. So I guess for, um, for everyone, including me, man, I'd love to hear a little bit about your story. I'd love to hear who you are, where you've come from and how you've come to be the man that you are today. So, sir, the mic is yours. Let us know a bit, little bit about your, your story. Yeah, sure. Thanks, man. Um, so I guess one of the things that um, from where to start is I've sort of had, and I, I feel a lot of men can resonate with this when you've sort of got this, you feel like there is something that you're sort of destined to do or you always wanted to, you feel extremely ambitious and you feel like there's a mission that you want to serve and you know that you're so much capable like of more than what you're currently doing. And you really want to figure out what that is so that you can have the passion and drive to get it, go out there and get it because you know that, you know, deep down with whatever you're doing currently, because this has happened throughout my life. It's like, ah, it's just I'm not living up to my full potential. How can I do that? So just to cut a real long story, real short and to put into one sentence, I did a whole lot of work on myself and so much self-reflection and ended up really getting clear on why vision, mission, purpose, and not letting myself feel guilty for those things. That started off um, just, I think, through the maturing process. And obviously, you know, I talk a lot about the hero's journey. I like to apply that. If anyone doesn't know what the hero's journey is, it's a story that is told in all religions, all cultures, and all tribes since the history of time. Um, there's a book called Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell. Um, it's super deep and intense and really hectic to get into. However, if you start applying those stories to yourself and your life, it's very easy sort of gives you a little bit of direction where to go let you know what's coming next and let you know what to predict and it lets you know you know the trials the ten the tests and the temptations that life throws at you and how you're actually going to overcome them so essentially like uh, my story is is i think it's very standard to a lot of a lot of other people's but i, I grew up singing dancing and acting and i had like this limelight thing sort of put on me like oh you're gonna be famous and all these all these things and I was like it was a bit of a spoiled brat during that time because everything was coming very easily to me um my parents split up I started working in like with my dad in a metal metal like fabrication thing and there was a lot of pressure that he put on me to do really well in those things and it completely ruined our relationship um we ended up hating each other almost like boxing on it was it was terrible then I moved back in so I moved with him to do all these different things started university i was like this is not for me the break between i won't get into it but me and my dad between there was hectic but we really bonded and like he's my best friend now like literally my best friend I, when i think about my dad i get emotional how much i love that guy he's the best I love that. um yeah <laughs> um i moved back in with my mom and she wasn't in a good uh, mental state because she'd gone through a breakup um, her parents passed away and she had some trauma things that she had to figure out and she put a lot of relationship stuff onto me and I had to keep saying to my mom, I was like, mom, I'm not your boyfriend. Can you stop like putting all this stress on me? I'm trying to be my own man. Um, and so I had some real deep conversations and stuff with her and figured out what I wanted to do um, in order to really develop myself. And one of the things that I'd never cheated on was bodybuilding and like diet and nutrition and learning about myself. What was really important was throughout the university process, I learned how to write really well and I learned how to dedicate time to write things. Studied aviation for a while. That was just, that wasn't going to suit my lifestyle. So I quit that, started studying business and I started getting D's and HD's. That's distinctions, high distinctions and like everything. And I was like, well, it's the first time I'm doing like really well with something. Like, why is this? And it was because it was a little bit of psychology stuff. Competed in bodybuilding while I was training and I won a whole bunch of shows. I won some natural bodybuilding state shows. I won a Southern Hemisphere title, PCA competition. And then I finally ended up putting my life and soul into a WBFF competition to test myself to see what I've, what I've got and if I'm worth myself, if that makes any sense. And 
throughout this time, I just finished uni. I got into a job in like a, in a government job. <laughs> I got this government job. Finally, I was like, well, I've got to do this because I know what my purpose is, but I've got to finance myself and take some responsibility somehow. And got into uh, the government job and I just looked around at how unhealthy everyone was like oh my goodness this is disgusting like what are they doing people just sitting at their desks like this overweight having like 20 cups of coffee a day not even exaggerating some people had literally like 10 to 15 cups of coffee a day I'm like you're, you're gonna have a heart attack like literally in probably the next like five years like see you later anyway um i was in there so in the position that i was in and the skills that i was learning throughout the time i really learned how to write, articulate and do things. I built a website of my own and then started writing a whole bunch of articles for certain things. And then I started training. I did a lot of leadership training at work, a lot of high performance training. And I did a lot of training how to train in general and, and developing and all those things. That was some of my roles um, that I was working in in human resources and other things um, in the business. And I ended up doing a lot of health training as well. And I was just watching people go, Bwah! like their minds are just uh, blowing with certain, certain things. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, throughout the process of testing myself uh, through the competition and competing in a competition naturally against enhanced athletes who were on steroids and beating them all, um, which I'm extremely proud of, didn't think I was going to beat them all, but bet them all. So I was like, well, this is fantastic. Um, really validated myself and the skills that I learned through all the health focused things, because I needed to use those to win. And also my most people's bodybuilding prep, I don't know if you know much about it but it gets really unhealthy like the last few weeks and stuff like just to, to real push yourself it's a little bit unhealthy i felt fantastic the whole time i was hydrated my brain was on i built all these different things it was like one of the best experiences of my life and now through learning all of those things and being able to take the time to self-reflect and learn things i read some really hard difficult books which for me I find it's a little bit different from the norm because you can go out and listen to a book in like a day. You can read a book in a real quick amount of time and just flick for it. And as you were saying, before we jumped on the podcast, taking action is really important. And people just, you can learn all these different things, but unless you take action, you teach, you do, you try some of the things that are in these books or whatever it is, you'll never, you'll never like come to fruition. So I went through a whole bunch of people that I respect and read some really difficult books. There is like a book that I'll read that are usually just a normal book and I'll read it every single week. Um, usually every single day, but every single week I'll read a book and it'll take me roughly a year to finish because sometimes I'll spend half an hour on one paragraph, just trying to analyze it, figuring it out using old school philosophy or psychology or something like that. And then applying some of the techniques to myself and then actually taking a step. I call like the framework theory practice mastery. So I learn the theory, I put something into practice and then I try to master something so that I learn it and internalize it. And that has given me the skills to coach entrepreneurs, business owners, marketers, investors, and some really high level people to become the best versions of themselves and really learn discipline and structure and responsibility and you know, how to be you know, the best version of themselves and shop better in relationships, intimate and within their business, how to be real good, inspiring leaders and how to create space for other people. And I absolutely love doing that. It's one of like the most favorite things I ever do. And it holds me accountable because I have to show up in the best energy, be productive and you know, have really good relationships and do all the difficult things um, myself in order to, you know, be someone that uh, other people can respect and be like, okay, I trust this guy because he lives it and he believes it as well. So I hope that covered a bunch of stuff. I, I literally try to cover everything in the smallest amount of time. So I hope that answers your question. I literally watched a, um, it's, it was a meme that went around. It was like that um, he has an, his Asian background, but he was like a Navy SEAL, an astronaut and a doctor. I'm not sure if you saw that photo or a video went around. I watched it. Uh, it was a podcast on Jocko Willick where he interviewed him and like he's like next level high achiever. I see some of that in you, man. You're a very, very high achiever in across multiple little yeah disciplines, man. Like you've uh, from the singing, the dancing to the bodybuilding success, the business success, mindset success, the human, uh, more so male vulnerability, hero's journey. You love learning the way you learn. That's awesome. Like when I, um, I'm not that uh, that detailed, but when I when I do learn, I I take notes and I take um I'll have the book here. I'll read it, but then I'll write it. I'll read it and take my takeaway so I can apply it. But mate, you're um you've got quite high standards for yourself. That's um that's awesome. You're um you you you're very much destined for for very 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 big things. Before I go back and dissect some of the things that you mentioned, what's next for you? What is it that's what's your what's your vision for where you're going like you even mentioned words that i i work with every day vision mission purpose i love that stuff so what's your vision where are you going what is it that uh, that you're here to do now in this this phase of your life cool well, quite simply after doing a really intense exercise that i call the y exercise um 
uh, I sort of found exactly what my purpose, vision, and mission uh, was going to be. Doing some crazy meditation things in Bali <laughs> always helps if you start going to do some meditation stuff in Bali. Um, and I teach some of these things uh, in my course as well. But uh, essentially, I also believe I was, on a, uh, I was on a really good podcast with someone not too long ago, and they said something in a, it um, with Heston Russell. So shout out that guy. He said something, and it made so much sense to me. He just said, "Purpose comes and goes." And I was like, oh my gosh, it's so true. Because depending on where you are, what you've achieved, if it actually comes, you use that energy, build the momentum, boom, skyrocket it. When you get to a certain level, you may need to upgrade your standards. You might have something interest and purpose will come and that energy will come and light you up again. And for myself currently at the moment, it is to overcome myself consistently and inspire other people to do the same. So oh. I, do that, I do that with my coaching. Um, I do that with my programs. I try to do that with my podcast and my YouTube channel and I've sort of used myself as an example and an experiment to try to um, show people, um, it just inspire them. Like, if I can do this stuff, you can too. Like, I've had a very similar background to all of you guys. We all struggle through the same things, just in different shapes and sizes and stuff. Um, so I'm trying to really um, live that and be that um, as, as, as best as possible because leadership awareness and um, uh, leadership intelligence literally comes from, like the science did a couple of trainings on it, literally just comes from, like leadership intelligence comes from emotional intelligence and emotional intelligence and self-awareness. So how self-aware and how conscious can you get? Focus on those things, do the exercises, as you were mentioning, which I respect about you, actually reading something and taking notes on it um, allows you to do that and, and your reflection ability. And I think social media does serve as a really good tool because it keeps you vulnerable if you share share everything on there as well so just a, a side note before i die there's about two or three things that i, I kind of want to say at once but just a side note on just the learning like i just i think some a lot of people they get kind of caught up in their like they've got to do it quickly and it, it sounds better if they read or listen to all these books super super quick and i was definitely that person like i'd be proud that i listened to a book within a, a couple of days but it's like what'd you get out of it i'm like oh fuck okay it's like you don't you don't actually have answers it's like fuck you yeah, i've read all these books but it's like well what did you really get out of it and how have you applied it and how has it actually tangibly impacted your life so i um just a side note for people that are in the personal development world well done for even listening be listening to a podcast but generally take notes don't feel like you're gonna rush it i like i like what you said it takes you a while to get through a paragraph because you're analyzing it you're writing it down like take like yeah like stop rushing it take your time with your learning and what and learn the way that you like to i would love to know you even from the start you said you did a lot of self-work a lot of work on yourself what does that actually look like so if someone's listening to this and they're maybe new on their on their journey and i don't like to say focus on say male or female but just for i guess your specialty and where you focus on is it generally males is that that's kind of like the hero's journey obviously very targeted at that is that is that generally the the demographic you're working with yeah, at the moment it's generally males, um, but because I do a little bit of relationship stuff as well, like the past couple of days, I've had quite a few girls reach out. So I'm actually thinking about doing a program for awesome. girls early next year. But however, at the moment, I work with Strictly Men to um, figure out those things because I understand it on a real deep level. Beautiful. I love the honesty with that answer. So say I'm a man, I'm listening to this and I'm new to the whole development, vulnerability, hero's journey, working on me, being, I guess, just put it in the work how did that start for you and then the next question would be how can someone start so how, how was your your journey into self self-development self-awareness working on you and then how can someone else get started well firstly i damn well hit rock bottom man oh my goodness so yeah i was like suicidal ideologies for a while um had a bad breakup with a girl which because i attached my purpose and identity to her um, when we broke up, I was like, oh, me, no, poor me, played like the biggest victim ever. And like, I ended up like, like I had a real, I had a relationship after that. So this was like quite a few years ago. Um, I had a relationship after that where we worked really well together and I was super in love and we were like ready to take the next stages, but we we're on different paths and it didn't work. And I was like, oh my God, no. And I was at the same stage where like, I have to be prepared for this breakup because um, last one rocked me. And because I was prepared and I went through that and I reflected during that time and learned best about myself. I got over this breakup really well. I thought it was going to completely ruin me, but I allowed it to um, like feel because men are very, in terms of my experience, we're just a little bit disconnected with our emotions. Girls get this stuff. I talk to girls all the time and say, does this make sense? They're like, yes. And I talk about, oh, this is what you would do. They're like, uh-huh, obviously, like duh, because they're really like a, 
uh, a little bit more in touch with their emotions. And for us guys, it's like, well, I don't want to feel these emotions, bury them down, bury them down, bury them down. And that's what I did. And then what happened was because that buried down and that was a little bit negative, other things started to suffer in my life, man. It just made a, a spiral just like this went down. And it was like work was shit, uni grades were suffering, bad relationships with parents, bad relationship with friends, wasn't eating as well. I would still train hard and that was kind of it, but I was still like hating myself. I just hated myself, man. So I was like, oh God, like you can't take any responsibility. You got no bloody discipline. You used to have it. You think this, you're this bodybuilder guy who's won these shows and like you're, you're doing well and all these things. And I was just like, oh my goodness, like shut up. Um, so eventually after having all of those times and being like, I don't want to be here waking up every day like, <laughs> Like literally I wake up and feel like shit and then go to bed. Just like, like when is this going to fucking end? And, um, it wasn't until I just admitted to myself, I was like, I got to do something about this. So I told one of my best friends, um, my buddy wind, shout out wind. And I just told him it was the hardest, the hardest things I've ever done. I think how about now. I'm like, before you keep going on, how did you do that? Cause I find it, that is an incredible first step, but I find, and you probably experienced if you're working with gentlemen, it's uh, that's, that can be really, 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 really fucking hard to do. Like I've got, I'm, 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 I'm quite proud. The relationships I have with the gentleman in my life, we we've cried in front of each other. We've uh, I create that space or we both create that space where we can feel safe to do so, we feel uh, understood. We feel like we're not being judged. So how did you even get to that stage? Because I find, I, I'm just, from my personal experience, most gentlemen don't even get to that stage where they feel comfortable. They don't, because they think they're, they think they're weak for doing it. They think they're a pussy for doing it. They think whatever society's expect, uh, idealisms have been put on them to them is they won't even take that first step. So how did you get to that point? How were you able to do that? So I literally just acknowledged the fact that I was like, Hey man, like you want to have these big lofty goals. You've got these things and you're uh, emotionally connected to them. And this is just a hurdle that's holding you back. And sometimes you literally just got to lean in. And I was like, you're not going to do anything. This whole part of you right now is just, it's not going to change. And it's just wasting up so much of your time and it's just ruining all of your potential. Like, and you need to do something about it. And I was like, what is that? And I was like, what's the next step for me to get over this? And I knew this stuff because I've studied this thing. I had experience with other people in my life with mental health. And it's like, you just got to talk and verbalize these things. And thank God that I had that reflection. And I was just like, cool, well, here's the next challenge for you. And that's just to talk about it. And sometimes something as tangible as having a conversation with someone can be revolutionary, especially with some of the uh, people that I coach, certain conversations that we have with certain people can just like change heaps of things, clear stuff. So thank God I trusted my friend enough. And I just said, bruh, <laughs> I got something to tell you. And um, yeah, I told him uh, what I was thinking and feeling. And um, next minute, yeah, we were both just like crying. But I trusted him because he's someone who's gone through more stuff than anyone I've ever, ever, wow. ever come across. His story is quite beautiful. Um, so yeah, so I trusted him. We had a chat and then that's sort of just like, okay, it's time to work on yourself now, man. Like get into it, get back on the grind and um, do what you're doing. Learn about yourself. And I think for me personally, I don't know if anyone else respects the genius of Jordan Peterson and the stuff that he talks about, but some of his stuff, into, I love how he, what he does and stands for. And if, I know people have mixed views about him, but one positive thing that I believe that he stands for is allowing men to be proud that they're men. Um, because a lot of us just growing up, we have certain instincts and all these things which are fucking dangerous. Like being a man is dangerous. Having the energy and the, uh, literally just having the energy and the zest for life and the libido that we carry is so ridiculously intense and powerful. And if you can't control that man, drugs, alcohol, porn, violence, you name it, self-procrastination, like whatever it is, hesitating, self-sacrificing, pulling away, not, not feeling worthy, feeling like a piece of shit, whatever it is, and just like hating your life. Like if, if you if you can't harness that um, emotional and like uh, emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual energy that us as men are blessed to have, then boom, it's gone. Catch you later. It can serve us or it will absolutely destroy us. And what Jordan Peterson does, as I mentioned before, is he allows us to be like, it's okay to have that energy. Just do something about it. So after listening to his stuff, I was like, hmm, I respect this guy and I want to learn you know, some of the things that he's got to learn about. And I remember him saying this statistic. He was like, well, I have this program called the self-authoring program and something, some don't quote, quote me on it, but something stupid. It was like, yeah, but, and like 60% of people who've completed this or, or saying something like 80% of people who completed this course have improved 50% in their university studies. Wow. And it's for men particularly. So I said, I'm going to do the damn course. And all it is, is just reflect, literally just teaches you how to reflect 
from doing all the past things in your life, getting you to where you are now and then predicting all the things in the future and then like what you can do about it. And it's an intense course, man. Like it took me like seven months to finish to, to do it properly and write it out. And I do like 20 minutes every single morning, get to work early and bum, 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 bum. like this is me time. I gotta get this done, get my brain warmed up before I start crushing the day. And yeah, it really helped me learn. And by, by I, this time I was learning a whole bunch of different things. And then what I did was uh, create my own theories and my own structures, my own diagrams, my own questions and things that I was like, okay, well, one of the things that are in here is like men is also need structure. What's the structure that I need that makes most sense to me that I've learned for all the things that I've done. And it's actually, as you can see, it's on that board just there. So I've got a photo. Nice. <laughs> so I created that structure for myself in terms of, all right, what do I need to prioritize? And then once this is achieved, what's the next thing that I got to focus on? What's the next thing that I got to focus on in terms of Can you energy? give an example? Like what? Yeah, what? for sure. Like literally, so, if you, literally read off that photo. What? Um, yeah, I've, I know that off the back of my. I know it off the back of my heart. So I don't have to coach on this. So the first thing to prioritize is uh, mental health and fitness. Firstly, optimize your body. You optimize your mind. You optimize your mind. You optimize your body. Learn the discipline. If you can't take an hour out of the day just to exercise uh, or another half an hour just to like eat healthy and like respect your your body mentally and physically, then you're just going to deteriorate. It's just an anchor that's going to weigh you down and prevent you from getting to your goals and where you want to be. And as men, we're physical beings. We're designed to go out, run, hunt, kill, fuck. We're supposed to do all these amazing things. And if we are not honoring that, um, it just drags us back down. The next step is self-confidence. If you have physical, good physical and mental health, it's going to be a lot easier for you to believe in yourself. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm strong. I've done this. I feel good. My, my body is strong. My, my mind is sharp. I am confident in myself. How Once do you, believe- you practice the methodology of that? Because I'm just speaking from experience. Confidence has probably been my biggest learning curve. Like I've always been a good learner. I've always been good with health and fitness. I've always been good with being vulnerable. It's probably confidence has been my, I guess, biggest learning curve. Tie that into leadership when it comes to business, but obviously you can see where they tie into each other. So... How does someone, how does someone, I'm just running down your steps that you've got, open up, have a conversation, start to do the self work. So if someone was to say, practice their health, they go to the gym, train, come home, have a healthy meal. How does someone practice say confidence or that, that aspect that you just mentioned just then? Well, confidence comes from, I wrote an article and I have a podcast on this called Confidence Decoded, if anyone wants to dive deeper, but um, confidence comes from uh, self-esteem and and self-efficacy. I can't remember the exact definitions and I wrote this, but like they're, they're pretty hectic, but it's literally just learning how to trust yourself. And it's just reflecting on sticking to and being integral to your word. If you say this week, I want to go to the gym four times this week and you do it. Oof, proud of myself. Nice. Self-confidence is a byproduct of some of the things that you do. And then you set another goal. Oh, cool. I'm going to eat something healthy this week. You do it. Boom. Okay. I feel a little bit more comfortable about myself. You're doing small little things that you've said that you're going to do. And every time you do them, you feel better. Sort of like if you, if you're in a sports team or some sort of teamwork, leadership, whatever it is. And if you have an idea, right, let's say you're just unsure, you're not really too certain about, oh, like you you don't really fit into the team and you really want to fit into the team. You have this idea and you're scared to share and you think it's going to be the best thing ever. Then you share the idea and you go, this could really work. And then someone else in the team goes, all right, let's try it. And you're like, oh shit, I hope this works now. And then everyone in the team tries it and it works. Immediately, you're in the team. Everyone's like, yeah, like a bun, you said celebrated. You're like, oh my goodness, like I fit in here. Like, why was I even thinking about, of course this idea was going to work. It's sort of the same thing with yourself that I believe is you know, you're your own team. <laughs> so if you set certain things and have ideas for yourself and you follow them through, you build respect for yourself and it's a lot easier and and literally just for coming through um, being self-confidence is it's literally it's i'm not kidding it's literally a byproduct and all you have to do is be aware of it that's why the structure is so powerful because when you see that it's like cool um i'm starting to do these things and i respect myself what's next and then you can challenge yourself in different ways and whether it's a certain business conversation a leadership conversation holding a, a team meeting for people or something like this having a hard conversation with your partner or just something where you're just going to stretch yourself or challenge yourself a little bit more i'm going to reach out to this person i'm going to do this i feel a little bit better in myself i'm going to try this and that just creates a big flow on effect of like forward momentum yeah so it's firstly sorting yourself out physically and mentally and then taking a little bit of time to reflect and then slowly challenge and uh, stretch yourself for things that are most important for you. And it's very easy when you start just analyzing yourself, you're like, Oh yeah, I could probably do that. That'd make this better. <laughs> certain, certain things. And it's the, uh, the definition of confidence is something along the lines of trust in one's own 
belief in their decisions. It's something like that. It's, 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 I know it's got the word trust and it's something along their own beliefs or something like that, that, that you have the ability to do what you say is literally what comes down to the, the definition of like all the different things for self-confidence. So that comes again, down, I'm going around a circle here. It comes down again to being integral to your word and you can do that and display that best way for men physically and mentally. Nice. I love that shit. You, you speak very, very well. I get captivated by, by oh, Thank you. I'm trying to write notes, but I'm also trying to enjoy the conversation. At the same time. Um, if I was to take it back to that original question where it's like, what, what, what did you do to start to I guess work on you and start working on yourself? As you mentioned at the start, you opened up to a friend. So you felt safe enough. You, you did reference something. If, sorry if I don't go too much off the topic, but you said you'd studied something that like, Said something told you to open up. Was that correct? You mentioned you said something about you'd studied something, you'd learned something that made you want to open up. Is that correct? Did I get did I get that wrong? Yeah, and I'm not sure where I learned that. That was just somewhere that something stuck in my head when it was like all you need to do is take the next step, and that that is that conversations are extremely powerful. I think it was some sort of leadership training that I had at work, awesome. and it was like yeah, so that's where that come from, and I just knew that I need to have a conversation. Beautiful. And from that point, not that this might not necessarily be the the actionable step, but you said you got into Jordan Peterson stuff. Was that the next thing from you? So you had that conversation with your friend, opened up, you felt a lot lighter. I'm assuming you felt a lot freer. You got it off your chest. From that point, did you dive straight into Jordan Peterson's content? Is that where the sort of real self-development started to begin? Sort of. So it sort of come through. I just seen like a few of Jordan Peters, Peterson's things and did his completed his course. And then, well, I was like, well, how is this guy? Cause just listen to a little bit of his story and other people that he's helped. How's this guy done so well for himself when he is extremely sick, is scared of having hard conversations and all these other things. Where did he learn these things? And I was just fascinated about the dark side of things. Cause I was like, well, we get dark as humans. There's, there's parts of us going to show up mentally. We get dark. We self-sabotage ourselves. It's just literally a part of being human. And I want to know more about it. So I started reading some of the stuff that Jordan Peterson talked about, Red Crime Punishment. I started reading Frederick Nietzsche's book, Thus Supposed to Zarathustra, um, Beyond Good and Evil. I read Half of Will to Power. Things super hectic. I read The Birth of Tragedy. And then I also started reading Carl Jung's books, Man and His Symbols, The Origins and History of Consciousness. So I started reading all these like dark books. And then I've read some of uh, other Fyodor Dostoevsky stuff, uh, Demons and a, and a few other of those intense books where you learn all these crazy stories and then a bit of Joseph Campbell and some other things. So just learn as much as possible about all this dark stuff. And then I went to Auschwitz and I had a look around all the different things. And I read all the Auschwitz stories. I read the rape of Nan King and all these just like things that like humans are capable of. And I was like, Oh, we, we are forces of danger, especially men. Like it's just crazy what we're capable of in terms of like evil stuff, you know, it's come from Frederick Nietzsche's book beyond good and evil. And it's not until that we really sort of embrace that we have that capacity, the capacity to be so bad that it's like, we have that capacity to be so good as well. And I believe there's a lot of people that I have talked to and coach that are like, Oh, why focus on the bad stuff? Just focus on the good stuff and be that. I'm like, well, if you can focus on the bad stuff and you know exactly what like not to do, you can like get away from that. And then if you know what is also amazing, you can get pulled towards that. So you're getting pushed and pulled the same way to, you know, really achieve your goals and then understand unconsciously when something dark shows up, could be somewhere in your ego, something else. Um, like some people, you know what I mean? Let's say they go to the gym because obviously I go to gym, all the health stuff. Let's say they go to the gym and the reason that they go to the gym is because they don't like how they look. They're like, oh, I'm fat, got a beer belly, I'm tired, my girlfriend broke up with me, or like, I'm not getting attention that I want, or I'd love to find a girl one day, or like, oh man, like I'm a leader in front of all these people and I look at me, like, how can I lead these people? Like, who would want to look up to me? I'm goddamn like, I look like shit. Um, and then they start going to the gym and they're like, yeah, okay, bro, bro, bro. Then they get real toxic and they become one of those people that, like, oh, you got to go to the gym, it's good for you, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> one of those, like, bro, dudes, it's like, well, that's sort of, you're just going down the dark side of things because your ego has shifted and caught up to you. And then eventually those people self sabotage, they end up doing something like taking, dr taking steroids or something like that. They end up like, having a month off and having a huge blowout and then can't get back on properly and blah, 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 blah. And that's because they're not going out of like celebration of their body. Like, no, you deserve to be, have a physique like Apollo and, and train your hardest and work along that hierarchy. You deserve to do that, get in there. It doesn't have to be gym. It can be any exercise or sport, whatever it is, but you deserve to go and do those things. And if you're not looking at it the right way, 
you never get the results you want. Same thing with being a leader. So if, if someone wants to be a real high quality leader and they want to inspire people, but they sort of attach themselves to, okay, if I'm a leadership position, that means I'm powerful. Next minute you start seeing that they start to turn slightly into a little bit of um, what's the word that just tyrant, a little bit tyranty with some of the things that they are doing and how they show up. And then they're not as present with people. And it's like, are you actually connect? Do you actually care? Or are you just trying to be like this? And then eventually boom, something blows up in their face. And then they come see me like, Oh man, what did I do? Like, <laughs> Help me out. This is not happening. And then I just sort of have to go back into all myth and hero's journey stuff and help them unrewire that and then rewire it back as best as possible to. How do you help people? You just, I wrote it down and then you just literally used the word help. Um, so how do you work with men? So say someone hits you up, uh, maybe two questions. What's, what's the most sort of common reason people come to you or get attracted to you to work with you? And then how do you actually work with them? So I sort of Trojan horse people. So I use the whole fitness thing to sort of get people in because like, Oh, I want to get fit and like this discipline. And then I start talking to them and they're like, Oh man, this is so much more than what we were, that we were out to get. Um, essentially like I, um, I help people upgrade their standards. I help people like invest into themselves, um, and really do some serious, um, personal development, but I like to do it through the use of stories and myth and consciousness and understanding how different energies and things will work. But I also like, you know, artistic things a little bit and leadership stuff. And I, I challenge people and I really try to get them, you know, theory practice to mastery. I like to challenge them to really start mastering themselves. And what I do is I get to learn them, le learn about them really well. There's certain exercises and things which you can use in my programs, which I actually do. So people can sort of navigate that, get to that position themselves. And then I will we'll come in there and sledgehammer and get them to real test themselves. But what we do is we help find in people's minds, their life, their body, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, or in business, whatever the path of most resistance is, which is going to get them to the biggest success. So I've had like some people, for uh, example, who have, and I know I'm just talk a little bit about sex here. So if everyone had a feeling about sex, like um, open your mind a little bit. <laughs> so I had someone who was like a little bit of a, he was a bit of a sex addict and he didn't realize that he was. It was more of a love addict, I'd, I'd say. it. And essentially um, we did a whole lot of deep work to understand where this come from. And those things that were showing up in his life were coming out of the point of he just never felt good enough and he never felt good enough to fit into certain groups. And it wasn't until and, and things, and he didn't feel like a winner. And he had all these things happen to him, which brought him down throughout like his whole life. And he always felt like he wasn't good enough. And essentially what we did from there is once we figured that out, um, we sort of was like, well, that's the reason why he keeps seeking love. Cause the only time he did feel good enough was when in certain groups they're like, Oh, that guy can get girls. So he's good enough to hang out with us. Mm. And what happened was his ego was we just said challenge like, well, what's the best challenge for you? I knew what the challenge was. And he was like, well, maybe I should just stop all of this and just put a hold on it for like five weeks. And I was like, look at him. He went six weeks. All right, we'll do six weeks. <laughs> I like to push people just a little bit further. And he failed like heaps of times. Like he failed so much. He's like, I, I don't understand why my ego keeps coming up. It's making up every single excuse in my mind to be like, no, you can do this. You can go find love. You can go talk to this person. You can do this. And he ended up just self-sabotaging himself. He's like, why can't I stick to this? Why is this not happening? Like, I don't get it. And it wasn't until he completed the, 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 like the challenge and he did it and he completed it when he was like, oh my goodness, I've been wasting so much time on this. And his brain, we help reflect and learn all of these different things and all these different models and stuff that I use. And what he ended up doing was what he really wanted to do. And that was create this awesome business to give back to different people to free up his life and free up his own and allow him to bring in a girl of his dreams because you know awesome. actually for him his self possible he wanted he wants a wife he wants someone like he can have an awesome relationship with but he's like it sort of kind of has to put on hold until i achieve these because i don't feel worthy enough in order to let that happen unless i get this mission done so he had these like three like he had like a three-year goal of quitting his job and starting this business blah 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 he did, did it in six months like That's six amazing. months the energy just whoosh. so that's one example of stuff that we do. There's a lot of people who come to me who are just stressed out, who um, are self-sacrificing themselves too much in their business, who um, have too, like too much going on or they're ready to invest in themselves and they're ready to like take themselves to the next level where they don't know how. They've built assets somewhere, but they haven't built a strong asset of themselves yet. And they're like, cool, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit free now. I've had some sort of success and like, I'm ready because a lot of people, I do have people reach out to me who are still in the process of trying to have success or trying to make business and all these different things. And they're like, cool, I want to invest in myself yet. 
but they don't feel worthy enough or they don't have the energy to put into this until they've completed that. And it's like, well, it's a sort of a negative way to do things, but I get how men work. And it's like, yeah, I get it. Like if you need to like work and build something, self-sacrifice yourself and come back here, like I'll help you out. I'll get you to that, to that next level. So I hope that answers some of your questions. Is that, is that a common thing? What you just said then, like they'll, they'll go build something to try maybe make themselves feel better about themselves. And they'll realize, fuck, this has has not, that this actually hasn't done it. Then it's time to work on me. Is that like a common thing that you find? Big time. Or they're a little bit of both and they're just not a hundred percent clear on exactly what their purpose and mission is. So I have some people who are just, you know, completely financially like successful. They've got all the freedom in the world. They've built these things and they're awesome. And then they're like, cool. I don't have to work another day in my life. Don't have to do anything, but I am missing passion and purpose. I want to wake up every day, just feeling alive and ready to go. And I've had like some of my, some of my um, (laughs) clients message me and they're like, he's like, like I literally he's like, all right, so I started at six, I finished it this time. And I'm like, we got to pull back now, man. <laughs> like your health is gone. You've gone to the other end of things. And he's like, yeah, but I just feel so determined and passionate for what I'm doing. And I'm like, well, absolute goal, goal achieved. And some pretty cool case studies around people like, well, in this 12 months, I did this, 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 this. And my business is scaled. I feel better. I'm a better parent, better leader, better um, better person around my friend. All my friends are looking up to me and they're like, well, how are you doing this? What are these things? What, what are you doing? And it's like, it's all just discipline techniques and stuff that we're doing. But for all the coaching and the stuff that I've learned through all this hectic stuff that we're doing is we just understand why we're doing it. And for men, we need stories. We need to hear about stuff in Greek myth. We need to hear about stuff in Norse myth. We need to hear about stuff from different areas and that different people have done. So we're like, all right, it makes sense. Or I'll give that a go. Like every time someone says to me, like, that makes sense. I'm like, all right, we're on here. <laughs> we are on. What's the biggest roadblock? Last couple of questions before I wrap it up. But how, what's the biggest roadblock from someone that comes to you? Like I've attracted to you. I want to get fit and sexy, but actually it's something a lot deeper than that. From that to them getting clear on purpose, living life. What's the maybe top one or two roadblocks that you find across men? What's the kind of most common problems you find from getting from point A to point B? Well, the, the most logical answer is literally just their own thought processes um, and the belief in themselves or the confidence mentioning beforehand, which is you know, the first two steps of the hierarchy. However, the biggest roadblock, like I'd say, just to change the question a little bit, is the hardest thing for people to do <laughs> is to just get still for a little bit. And there's some beautiful quotes. I can't remember who, who it was, um, but it was just like, you know, the inability of men to mature and become men is their inability to sit still for an hour, something right. like that. That was some, I can't remember who it was. It was great. I've got it somewhere in one of my lectures. <laughs> just <Woo-hoo>! <laughs> and it isn't until that they, they take some time that they've set and setting. You learn a lot of this in plant ceremonies and other things, set and setting with things. If you have the right set and setting and the intention to just be like, cool, I just need to figure myself out. Just sit still, let my mind do this for a bit me and like go crazy and yet having thoughts here, here, business, business, relationship, this, 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 this. And it isn't until you've unthought all of those things and you've thought about heaps of them that your uh, mind untangles. It's quite uncomfortable, but you sit there and you're thinking and you're like, oh, okay, this. And then you're like, I need to do this. I need to write this down. This needs to happen. I need to get on my phone. I need to post this. This is not happen. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right? It isn't until all of that sort of unravels till you get to this point where you're like, okay, now what do I want to think about? And it's like, well, I should probably think about me because God damn, I've been stressed out or I'm just unclear on stuff that I need to do. And you're like, well, what needs to happen? And I have a beautiful story. So thanks for asking this. Literally it happened yesterday on my phone. I had a really close friend of mine. I went to his wedding last weekend in Adelaide and he messaged me and he said this, I'm kidding. He's like, bro, I've been on my honeymoon for three days and I've just had time to think. And he's like, I peaked creatively when I was doing a little bit of work. Um, with you because he wanted to create a video for me because he's just got into video editing. I'm like, please create a video. <laughs> like, please, I'd love that. So he created a video editing for me and then started his own video editing journey with uh, things that he was doing with his own projects. And he mentioned to me, he's like, I don't know why I'm beating around the bush. I've been super stressed out. And all I need to do is I just want to get some coaching from you. And I've been still enough to reflect on that. And I think that's the best thing for me. Now that's not going to be everyone's experience. Like, oh, I'm going to get some coaching from Corey. But just, just the fact that he was still enough to think, okay, what's going to be the best thing for me? And he landed on this. This is what I want. And this happens every time I I get still. And this happens on all the business owners and the coaches and people that I have. It's just setting a little bit of time, like whenever it is, because I believe stillness works in like it takes up 12% of your energy. I've got a model for this. It's great. 
Awesome. It could be everyone's is different for themselves. It could be 10 minutes a day is all you need, right? For some people. Some people could be half an hour a day, right? But if you don't take that every single day, by the weekend, right? If it was 10 minutes a day, you need 50 minutes of stillness on the weekend. If you don't take that on the weekend, by the end of the month, you're going to need a few hours. If you don't take that by the end of, you know, biannually, by the end of six months, it's going to be a weekend or a week. By the end of the year, it could be four weeks. And you see people who haven't been still all year, they'll take their four-week holiday and they'll just... Yeah. sit down and do nothing. And a lot of the time what shows up with business owners and stuff that I work with is they take a little bit of time off and they get sick because biologically their body stores their stress and all of their fat cells and all of these different things in their bodies. And then once they're like, finally let the cortisol drop, the body goes, cool, all of the sickness that we've been suppressing to keep you here, yeah, come out. And they get sick and they're throwing up and, and they're like, what's wrong with me? And I'm like, it's just let it happen, man. Like, <laughs> you did this to yourself. <laughs> so um, yeah. So and then if you can take that little bit of time, it just, skyrocket you like as i mentioned our masculine energy for men is so ridiculously powerful for creative energy specifically our creative energy energy is out of control and if you can harness it you can think about it and you can use things and you just sit down with either a whiteboard and if all business owners know this sometimes they have the best whiteboards and they follow that plan and they're like wow i'm a millionaire now it only took me six months i've been trying for like heaps of years i just did one whiteboard and there we go or you have a big piece of paper or something like that. And you just can take the time to just sort your thoughts out, write out some things and uh, set some goals or just structure mind maps and stuff about yourself. Immediately results just come like they, they just is one of the most powerful things ever. And um, I can't remember who was uh, Jordan Peterson said it as well. I read it on a, uh, one of his posts not too long ago. And he was just like, you know, if you want to become dangerous, become articulate. And then he's like, well, how do you become articulate? He's like, learn to write well because writing, helps your thoughts. And I'm like, you know, that's exactly what I did. I learned how to write really well. And um, for me personally, and I, I write and I draw diagrams and things like that and it makes sense. And then I can stick to them and I can think about them in my brain when I'm having certain conversations with people, when I'm trying to inspire people, even on this, on this podcast, I've had like three of my models that I've had and this just pop up in my own, that thing behind me just pop up in my brain and I've gone, cool, I can just speak to that now because I, I know the shape of it. So I love that. Before I ask the final question, where can people find you if they were interested in just connecting with you, your services, your courses, or just following your content? Where can people get in contact? Where can people find you? Awesome. So Corey Boutwell on Instagram, C-O-R-E-Y Boutwell on Instagram. I try to put up heaps of good stuff there. I have a podcast called Corey Boutwell Podcast, Spotify, Apple, all the good stuff, a YouTube channel, um, Corey Boutwell as well. And then website, CoreyBoutwell.com, which I have a lot of articles on there, which is some seriously, some, if you're interested in the confidence one, there's a good article in there. And I have a podcast called um, Confidence Decoded on that one uh, too, which is cool. So that's where I, I stay with all my things. And if anyone is interested in working with me, just send me a direct message. Or if you have any questions in general, um, I sort of, people get sick of me because I'm like, oh, how are you doing this? <laughs> like, <laughs> I go crazy just because I'm just super passionate about this stuff. And I want people to, you know, be the best versions of, them, of themselves because, you know, I did it myself. And any time for me, just personally, it's very rewarding if someone learns something that I've learned or the technique of diagram and then they apply it and it makes them feel better. I feel validated as a human. And I um, take that in because as Frederick Nietzsche said, isn't not the responsibility of the gift giver to give thanks to the receiver for receiving. So to really feel appreciative and grateful for the things that you're doing with yourself, you need to give a gift worthy enough of receiving. And I hope that all of these models and things that I've talked about are worthy enough for receiving from whoever is listening. And if you do receive them and you do have any benefit from them, thank you. I love that, man. Thank you. You, you, you can just feel the energy from you, the passion, the, the, like, the buy-in, the conviction on who you are and what you stand for and the work that you've done. And it, it's very inspiring, man. I, I'm very, very grateful that you sent me a message to jump on this podcast. The last question to wrap it up. What do you want to be remembered for? Oh, damn, that's a good question. Oh, damn, that's a good question. Cool. Yeah, well, essentially, I want to be remembered for um, my purpose, man. So I really just want to be remembered for someone. Well, Someone who has inspired others to consistently overcome themselves. That is straight up it. Like as soon as you're on the journey and you start overcoming yourself and you're con like the, the key word there is consistently because when you're doing that every single day, it compounds like crazy. And if any, anyone else is learning any of the stuff that um, I've learned that I've taken, not just from the shoulders of giants, but learned myself, a little bit, a lot of my own intuition for things because it's 2000 and almost 22 right now and the stuff that we are dealing with are different to all the stuff that the people that we're learning from have learned 
Um, so I've taken my own sort of spin on things for that. So if it's helping anyone um, and, and they're starting to get on this good wave of this, this, this consistent progress and chasing your goals and your dreams and not holding back and being you know, a real good partner, being a real good inspiring leader, being a creator and someone who can facilitate and hold space for people and be someone who is a benchmark that other, well, someone who other people can benchmark themselves against I believe people can be very proud of. So I hope I embody that um, and people can learn some things from that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Well, I just, just attest to it, man. You definitely just from my short in, engagement with you, man, you're definitely living up to that. You're already living your purpose. You're already making that mark. You're already setting that standard for what a, what an incredible human man, what an incredible man can be. So Thank you for your time, man. I really do appreciate it. For, uh, for everyone that's tuned in, guys, if you've got some value from this, please hit up Corey. I've got all his details in the, in the, uh, in the caption or the description below. Send him a message, send myself a message. And if you've got any value from this, please give it, give a gift, just like Corey just said then. Like, give a gift of what you've learned today to someone else because you just don't know whose life you could change just by sending them a single podcast. Thank you for tuning in, guys. I'll see you guys on the next one. One more thing, one more thing. Lewis is going to be on my podcast. If you listen to this, you've got to listen to that one as well because Lewis is going to be on there talking about all some good stuff. So big thank you to you, Lewis. Thank you, sir.